time that sort of uh, shows Stellantis' this whole year. Stellantis disappoints, follows to do better. Uh, they keep making changes. So Stellantis, basically Jeep, Dodge, Ram, Chrysler, or any of the three of them, CDJR. Um, Stellantis has been having all kinds of problems. What their, what I feel the root of their problem is uh, when things were selling, it made sense that when you had a limited number of uh, computer chips to build the higher margin vehicles, so they started building the vehicles that had more profitability. So the more options a vehicle has, the more money you make off of it, basically because it's more expensive and you're making a percentage on the price. So as, it, well, just about every car manufacturer started making the higher end vehicles, people were buying them because it's all that was available. So the profitability was going up. So they liked that. So they kept building more high-end vehicles. And they just worked themselves out of a job. At some point, you build so many vehicles that at such a high price that you've just exhausted the number of people that can afford that price of a vehicle. So Chrysler has, or Stellantis, the parent company Chrysler, has come back and talked about what they're trying to do and they've cut prices or they've well somewhat they've cut prices but they're trying to cut expenses uh they're talking about a five to seven percent margin which if you consider the price of the vehicles that's actually a pretty good margin to uh well get anything above that they're working on their inventory levels so part of what creates a problem is when you're building all these vehicles and nobody's buying them it's just building up an inventory so if you're i don't know, say you want to Jeep Wrangler and you go to the lot and there's a hundred of them on every lot in your state you feel like it's a bad time to buy because if they're that backed up there's going to be better deals out there so then you wait and then everybody else sees that it's time to wait so you all wait especially like now we're seeing um, that there's pressure for the Fed to reduce the interest rate so if the interest rate comes down it's going to be cheaper the money is going to be cheaper so that's telling you that you should wait. You should wait for those interest rates to drop. So there's a better uh, better price. You pay less because of that interest rate. Possibly you could buy and refinance when the time comes. But it's, I mean, your money ahead if you can wait, if you know interest rates are going to come down. But inventory levels continue to rise. And Stellantis, I mean, they care about it because it affects their sales. But for the most part, these cars belong to the dealerships. They don't belong to Stellantis anymore. When Stellantis ships the car, for the most part, I mean, uh, most of the time there's a little bit of a delay when it's got to be paid for. But my understanding is that they, within a month, basically, belongs to the dealership and not to Stellantis. But and there's still pressure on Stellantis to you know, make the deal work, get the car sold. They're just talking about moving the metal. So moving the metal is... Just getting the cars sold so that your inventory is not just going up, 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 up. Especially when vehicles are, I mean, they're a depreciable asset. I mean, you're not selling, you know, cakes and donuts, but it's similar. As it gets older, it loses value. It doesn't rot. It's, well, it does rot on some level, but I mean, it still has some value, even if it's set there. I've seen, well, three model years old at this point because if you're out buying a new vehicle i mean pick up a 2025 you'll save you know they're out and you'll save a year of depreciation why would you buy a 2024 unless you're getting a discount and there's a, a bunch of 2023s out there i've seen uh the ram pickups um i've seen the uh ford mach -E's. there's a few different ones because if you search for uh, brand new 2023s you're gonna find some stuff out there and it should be a, a better deal because it's got uh, two years of depreciation on it. For, for the best deal, go for 2025. So Jeep has done some incentives. But what they're doing, and most of the car manufacturers are doing this, is they're doing interest rate incentives, some lease deals with money down. These aren't that great of incentives. So the problem they run into is say they can't do like a $10,000 rebate off this because then immediately somebody that already bought it, their vehicle's worth 10,000 less. And the problem is that there's so many of them out on lease that if they do a big discount offer, it affects the residual on that lease. 
So when they go, when they bring that back and try to resell that leased vehicle that's two years old or, or older, it loses its value because they uh, discounted. So over the years, GM has done a lot of discounting, and it affects their it affects their price uh, when they bring that vehicle back. So you, you can see in the incentives that they're being careful to not drop the price as much as they're trying to just create a, an incentive. Um, I, I guess this one here would be the exception. That that is actually a uh, actual discount on the Gladiator, 10% below MSRP. That one must be discontinued because they don't have the 2025 model, they just have the 2024. So in that case, it's not as bad since all of them are, um, you know, previous model year rather than uh, having to protect the 2025s. So when you're looking for a car, you've got to consider the depreciation based on the year. Because if you were going to buy one, it would make a difference to you if it was, you know, 2024 or 2025. Uh, you know, project a few years in the future, you know, one or two year different in the model year. So if you buy one of those 2023 Ram pickups that are stolen a lot, and then in 10 years, I mean, it looks like it's 13 years old instead of, you know, if you got a 2025 for similar price. Especially since... Um, Oh, one of these pages, Stellantis is, in their cost cutting, they're getting rid of the, uh, oh, the Ram pickup. I think they call it the classic or something. But it was the, um, the, the lower level, like the work truck version of the Ram pickup. They're stopping building that. Oh, here we are, Ram classic, 1500 classic. Because that's the most reasonably priced one. So they're stopping making the most reasonably priced truck. And it's, I mean, it's not cheap, but it's, you know, a better price than the other ones. Because a lot of people, they, they need a truck to do work, and they don't care about, you know, how it looks, basically. They're looking for functionality. And all these manufacturers are trying to cater to the person that wants the pretty truck with all the trim and, you know, sunroof and leather seats and all the accessories. And even, uh, like, when I drive a truck, I mean, I'm using it because I'm hauling something. They get horrible gas mileage. I've got a car to drive. If I'm not hauling something, I'll drive the car. I use the truck when I need to haul something. So I'm not as concerned about how pretty it is. I'm concerned about what it'll tow, what it'll haul. Uh, especially, like, having the 8-foot bed is really nice. So I can, uh, you know, shut the tailgate, use a tunnel cover, keep my stuff dry. Makes a difference. So Jeep is trying some stuff. Uh, Stylus in general, they changed the CEO of North America. And that, actually, talking about the CEO for North America, anytime you change uh, management, it, it's kind of a green light for them to spend some money, write off some expenses, and just say, oh, the other guy did it. So it, it, there, there's some ability there for, them, for Stylus to make some changes that might be expensive, but that way you know, they can at least go in the right direction. So if they come up with like a bigger rebate or something, at least they can be like, oh, that's the old guy's fault and we're not gonna, you know, we're not gonna screw it up again. Although I'm sure they will, because uh, throughout history, the, uh, you know, Chrysler Group, whoever's owned them, has been a big proponent of just uh, fill the car lots and hope they sell and then do some big incentives. But what they need right now is some bigger incentive to move this stuff because they built the most expensive versions. So anytime the economy is doing good, you have to be planning for it to do not as good. Anytime the economy is doing bad, you have to plan for being good. So basically, like when times are doing great, they should have been planning some, you know, like Jeep, maybe a, I don't know, say a regular cab, two-wheel drive or front-wheel drive Gladiator, you know, something like really cheap. I don't know, bad idea maybe, but, um, or like more of the economy car. And then when, you know, like now when things aren't selling, they should be, have a plan for the luxury vehicle. They can come out when the market changes. Because the only thing you know for sure is the market's going to change. So you've got to have the other thing. And that's where Ford's kind of shooting themselves in the foot as they're getting rid of all their economy cars and their smaller stuff. Yeah, the F-150 has kind of become the everything vehicle because like everything else people bought, it just isn't made anymore. So they're all going to the F-150. But there isn't... 
you know, there isn't like a economy car option. There's not like a small vehicle option. Um, I remember the um, Toyota small two-wheel drive pickup. Those would sell like crazy around here. I haven't had a, I was a GMC Sonoma, like the S15, S10, the little uh, regular cab two-wheel drive pickups. I bought a brand new one of those in the early 90s, and it was like right at 10 grand for brand new. And I, you can't, you can't touch anything for more than double that. But they don't make anything that small and that simple. I mean, it was just a four-cylinder five-speed with rear-wheel drive. But it was, you know, as a young person, that was something I could afford to buy new, and I didn't have to, you know, find a 200,000-mile truck that was half rusted out. So it'd be nice to have options. It'd be nice if the dealers cared. It'd be nice if they're building something for the common person and not just trying to uh, cater to the top 10% or 10% of income earners or whatever they're trying to do because they're definitely not building vehicles for the common person. But all right, that is Stellantis trying to reduce inventory levels and we'll, we'll see how that plays out. I think they're going to have to give some bigger incentives. I think they're going to have to discount these vehicles more than they would have to if they hadn't built such fancy stuff because there's only so many people that can afford fancy and they are obviously built beyond that capacity. It's all right. Thanks guys. That's all I got.